Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I hope you are either just having a breakup or miserable being single because this month we're going over Love is a Dog from Hell by Chucky Bukowski, okay? And this book, I've noticed that when I am happy, I'm like, eh. But when I'm going through it, I like this a lot better. So if you are happy um, and everything's going great for you, you might not love this book, okay? But if you're like me, <laughs> if you're like me and you've been having a rough go of it as, as of late, this might be the thing to get you going. <clears throat> so... Um, super exciting. So let's talk a little bit about the history of this book, okay? Like we did um, the last couple times, we're going to kind of go over some of the stuff that was happening in his life during the time of him writing this. Now, again, these poems are from 74 to 77, although um, in the first section, there's a poem in there from 1972. So give or take, whatever. So what we are going to be doing, because last time we spoke, we talked um, about his life up to 1974. So now we are in 1975. And in 1975, Bukowski, Tyler, Taylor Hackford's film screened at the Whitney Museum in New York as a part of their new American filmmaker series. Now, if you saw it, like we just did a watch along of that like a week ago. So it's in here somewhere. Maybe I'll put a thingy up here. And he meets Pamela Cupcakes Miller, the subject of the book Scarlet, which I will put a cover of right here so you can see it. And just so you know, that book Scarlet is inside this book. So we'll be reading those. And he met her for the first time when she brings her friend Georgia to his apartment which I'm pretty fucking sure is this person here. Black Sparrow Press moves from LA to Santa Barbara in the fall. Oh, and he met Cupcakes on November 10th. Okay, so this one's pretty crazy. In December of 75, Linda King, possibly pregnant with Bukowski's child, has a miscarriage. Um, and I'm trying to remember what he talks about that in. She calls him on the phone and they're talking on the phone and tells him all about that. Maybe it's in Women, I can't remember. Then he, he also starts the novel Love Tales of the Hyena, which eventually is published in 1978 as the book Women. And a New, an LA Times article reports that Bukowski is earning $20,000 a year. Okay, so other things that are happening. Sparrow 30. I don't know what these are. I don't know if this is like a broadside series or what. Um, I need to find out more about these. But um, Africa, Paris, Greece uh, is published in March. And then on December 18th, Bukowski's second novel, Factotum, is released. And Factotum is about the 10-year the drunk the period from when he left college up until, I mean, it kind of goes back and forth a little bit, but um, it's basically him bumming around the country and um, not having much purpose. Uh, he is living on Carlton Way at um, 5437 here in LA. Um, and then he did a slew of readings this year. He read, at um, the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville, spent a week on campus. That was in January. In February, he read at Baudelaire's Santa Barbara and was paid $300. Um, professional recording was made, but has never surfaced. Um, on March 5th, he did a reading at West Coast Bodega in Long Beach. In May, he was at the Golden Bear in Huntington Beach. Um, also in May, on the 24th, he was at the Roadhouse in Santa Cruz. And then on the 31st, he was at Telegraph Hill Gym in San Francisco. 
then back to Huntington Beach on June 25th at the Golden Bear. Um, did a reading at the Molten Theater Playhouse in Laguna Beach on the 15th and 16th of August. Uh, did a reading at the Contemporary Art Museum in Houston, Texas on October 4th. And I think this is where he met um, the woman who he referred to as Catherine Hepburn. And oh, I can't remember what her name is. And in the book Women, it's a different name too. But there are some poems about her as well. The um, six foot tall, uh, wealthy woman who's like a art dealer and um, tr world traveler kind of thing. I can't remember what her name is. She, uh, she missed the reading there. And so she came to see him in LA. It's a whole other fucking story. Um, and then on October 19th, he was at Boudelaire's in Santa Barbara again. And then he was at the Golden Bear in Huntington Beach again on Halloween. Um, Bob Lind of Elusive Butterfly fame was the opening act. I wonder if that... I don't think that's the right guy, but that might be the right story. The guy gets, like, booed off the stage because people wanted to hear Bukowski. And then in Madison, Wisconsin on November 9th, there was a videotaped reading, so you could see that, because nobody has seen this videotape, I don't think, but it was advertised. Um, and then he was at Amazing Grace in Evanston, Illinois on November 18th, and Northwestern University on November 19th. So he was all over the place in 75. Um, and then this is a really interesting story. Um, he switches from the Royal Quiet Deluxe to a used Olympia SG-1, and I'll tell you why. Oh, and this is actually on Bukowski's writing table in the mid-70s. There you go. It costs $143 that John Martin from Black Sparrow paid for because Linda King went into his house and stole his, um, stole his uh, typewriter, his paintings, his books, was hiding in the bushes when he comes home one night. Um, he notices that all the shit's gone. And so he goes out looking for her, and she has the typewriter over her head, and she says something like, I don't know if this was the don't tell me about your women thing. But anyway, so she has the typewriter over her head, and she smashes it in the street and just, like, destroys it. So, um, Bukowski told John Martin what happened and he bought him a new typewriter or a used new typewriter. Um, and this Olympia would be his last manual typewriter. Now there is like a question about this cause something's going to come up later. So we'll, we'll get to that. So that was in December. Um, funny things that happened in LA. Um, Emperor Hirotodo, oh, Hirodio of Japan visits LA, um, and he's allowed to visit Disneyland, but he declined to smile while he was there, and that happened on October 8th. But also in 1975, um, the LAPD agrees to destroy secret files that were kept on 5,500 citizens. Don't even, I, I, I don't, I don't know. So 1976 rolls around. Let's see how well he's doing. So there's a major profile on him in Rolling Stone magazine. That right there probably solidified him, like seriously. Um, he meets his future wife, Linda Lee Bailey, at the reading at the Troubadour on September 29th, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, he makes his first trip outside of the US for a reading in Canada in October. Now check this out. Rent for the Carlton Way apartment is $105 a month at a time when his monthly income was 1700 bucks. Fuck, dude. Okay, like just so you know, like most places, most people, their rent is like half their fucking income, okay? That's shocking, just because, like, life is hard. Most places, when you try to get an apartment, you have to have a great credit score, but you also have to usually make three times the amount of the rent. So where is my inflation calculator? So we're going to do $105 in 1975. Okay, so basically, his in today's money, his, his rent... In L.A. 
was like 600 bucks. Okay. 600 bucks in LA, dude. It's not even inflation. It's fucking gouging. Ugh. Okay, and he was making, how much did I say he was making? 1700 Okay, so let's see this. If in 1975, I purchased an item for $1,700 hairs, it would cost... So he was basically making almost $10,000 a month in today's money. And his rent was 600 bucks. $10,000 a month, and his rent is 600 bucks. Dude, you used to be able to do a lot for a lot less, man. That that um, the the cumulative rate of inflation since then is almost five hundred percent. Oh, that is fucking annoying, dude. Anyway, so um, there was a New Year's greeting at the beginning of the year um, from Black Sparrow called the the last poem and tough company. And then in December, um, they came out with the next year's um, New Year's greeting, which is art, which is the last poem in Play the Piano Like a Percussion Instrument. But also in April, on April 14th, Scarlet was released, which was a Black Sparrow limited edition of 195 copies. Now, Scarlet is the book of poems that he wrote about cupcakes. And I, like I said earlier, I think that's in here. Okay, so let's see how many readings this motherfucker did in 1976. Two nights at the Pastime Bar in Tallahassee paid 500 plus expenses in February. Rockstar. University of Pittsburgh Lower Lounge, March 12th and 13th. Ooh, that's on my birthday. And Tom Waits opens both nights. Oh my fucking fucking god oh my god dude if i could have seen tom waits opening for fucking bukowski on my fucking birthday two years too early but that would have been it for me that i i could have said oh okay i'm done like like how, how is anything i'm ever gonna do in my life gonna top that fuck me Okay, St. Mark's Church Poetry Project in New York in June. Um, and also in June, he was back at the Golden Bear in Huntington Beach. On July 11th, he um, was at the Troubadour in L.A. and paid $1,000 opening for comedian Steve Martin. Check this out. He opened for Steve Martin and was paid $1,000. Dude, the world is such a fucking different place now. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. Do we... Yeah, let's let's do this. Okay, so... And we're in 1976 now. Okay. So let's do this and say $1,000 that he gets for his Steve Martin show. So he was basically paid over $5,000 for that. Great. Okay, what about his um, all-expenses-paid trip to Tallahassee? 2600 bucks. This motherfucker, dude. Living the fucking life of Riley. Um, okay. Then on September 10th, he was at the San Francisco War, War Memorial and Performing Arts Center. Jesus, San Francisco, you gotta come up with a fucking easier fucking name, dude. Then he was at the Troubadour um, on September 28th and 29th, opening for country singer Larry Hosford. Okay, and I think, is that when he met Linda Lee? Yeah, that's when he met Linda Lee. And the three other, or the two other women that he met that night who are also in the book women. Western Front in Vancouver on November 8th. Santa Cruz Poetry Festival on November 13th. And I think the Santa Cruz Poetry Festival... Um, and I can't remember what book this is in, because I don't think it's in any of the Black Sparrow books. But um, the Santa Cruz Poetry Festival is where he had his run-in with Ginsburg. All of those cats. And the LP released of Totally Corrupt, The Dial of Poems, Poets. 
um, five poems, sources from a 1974 reading. Um, and then also, an oil taker explodes in L.A. Harbor, killing five people and injuring 50 on December 17th. So now let's get into the year of this book. So, Bukowski, Taylor Hackford's film, is screened at USC's Anberg School of Communications as part of their Arts and Communications Media Conference. Jesus fucking Christ. Can't people just call something like The Thing? Fuck, dude. Words, man. So that was on June 4th. Um, maybe Tomorrow, Sparrow number 54, came out on March 1st, and this book came out on September 15th. He looks to be starting to wind down his um, excessive reading tours. Um, he was at the Golden Bear in Huntington Beach on January 16th and January 30th. Um, Boudelaire's in Santa Barbara on June 5th. Um, there is an audio release MP3 from Cassette Bootleg. Um, oh, I've heard that. I have heard that. I gotta find that again. Um, that was, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Then he was at the Golden Bear again on July 11th. I think the Golden Bear is that place where, um, when you read women, it's this place where, um, the guy says, I wish I could have you in here every night you outsell the rock bands and stuff. And he's like, it'd never work kind of thing. Uh, double LP release 90 minutes in hell. Source is 1966 Home Reading. And if I'm not mistaken, I think 90 Minutes in Hell has the audio from his reading in Bellevue, Washington. And 70 Minutes in Hell is 90 Minutes in Hell minus the Washington reading. I think, don't quote me. Um, okay, so Linda Lee Bailey lives with Bukowski at Carlton Way Apartment every Saturday night through Tuesday morning, then stays at her own place and tends to her restaurant the remainder of the week. Okay, so that tells me that 1976, if that's how their life was in 77, then 76 must be the year in with the Thanksgiving situation with all the shit, that would make sense because Vancouver was November 8th and the chick from Vancouver comes down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Cupcakes and um, Gloria, I think I said her name was, destroy the thanks or the Christmas turkey and all that shit. And then New Year's. Yeah, so that makes sense. So, I'm pretty sure that the majority of the book women, or at least the last half of it, takes place in 76. Okay, so she stays there Saturday through Tuesday morning, then stays at her own place and tends to her restaurant for the remainder of the week, which is the, the do drop in. Is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. Can't remember if that's the phony name or the real name, but that was in San Pedro. And then for anyone who gives a shit, Super Bowl eleven is played at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena with the Minnesota Vikings versus the Oakland Raiders on January 9th, which I'm pretty sure the Oakland Raiders won. All right, so that is the history lesson of what the fucking hell was going on during the making of this book. And all that we've learned is that inflation sucks, and at one point, you could make a lot of money doing very little and you didn't really have a lot of bills to pay. The American dream is dead, okay? So again, if you are single, or you have just gone through a breakup, this is gonna be a really fun group read we're gonna do for the rest of the month, every week, usually on Thursdays. And this is in four parts. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so there, it's in four parts. Maybe tomorrow I'll put up the first part just to try to catch up since we're a little behind this month. Yeah, I'll do that. So part one will, which is in the Echo Edition, page 15 through 76. Oh, and I think um, the book Scarlet is in part three, if anyone gives a shit. Okay, so we will be going from 15 to 76 tomorrow, okay? So if you would like to be a part of the Bukowski Book Club, you have to join the channel at any level. 
um, you will get those videos and streams, okay? So hit the join button, type hard, read fast, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.